prolegomena in general to the sacred canons. What a canon is? A canon, according to Zonaris, in his interpretation of the 39th letter of Athanasius the Great, properly speaking and in the main sense of the word, is a piece of wood, commonly called a rule. Which artisans use to get the wood and stone they are working on straight? For, when they place this rule, or straight edge, against their work, if this be crooked, inwards or outwards, they make it straight and right. From this, by metaphorical extension, votes and decisions are also called canons, whether they be of the apostles of the ecumenical and regional councils or those of the individual fathers, which are contained in the present handbook. For they too, like so many straight and right rules, rid men in holy orders, clergymen and laymen, of every disorder and obliquity of manners, and cause them to have every normality and equality of ecclesiastical and Christian condition and virtue, that the divine canons must be kept rigidly by all. For those who fail to keep them are made liable to horrible penances. These instructions regarding canons have been enjoined upon you by us, O bishops. If you adhere to them, you shall be saved, and shall have peace. But if you disobey them, you shall be sorely punished, and shall have perpetual war with one another. Thus paying a penalty deserved for heedlessness. The apostles in their epilogue to the canons. We have decided that it is right and just that the canons promulgated by the holy fathers at each council hitherto should remain in force. C. I of the fourth. It has seemed best to this holy council that the 85 canons accepted and validated by the holy and blissful fathers before us, and handed down to us, moreover, in the name of the holy and glorious apostles, should remain henceforth certified and secured for the correction of souls and cure of diseases, of the four ecumenical councils according to name, of the regional councils by name, and of the individual fathers by name, and that no one should be allowed to counterfeit or tamper with the aforementioned canons or to set them aside. If anyone be caught innovating or undertaking to subvert any of the said canons, he shall be responsible with respect to such canon and undergo the penance therein specified in order to be corrected thereby of that very thing in which he is at fault. See two of the second. Rejoicing in them like one who has found a lot of spoils, we gladly embosom the divine canons, and we uphold their entire tenor and strengthen them all the more. So far as concerns those promulgated by the trumpets of the spirit of the renowned apostles, of the holy ecumenical councils, and of those convened regionally and of our holy fathers and as for those whom they consign to anathema, we anathematize them, too. As for those whom they consign to deposition or degradation, we too depose or degrade them, as for those whom they consign to excommunication, we too excommunicate them. And as for those whom they condemn to a penance, we too subject them thereto likewise. C. I of the seventh. We therefore decree that the ecclesiastical canons which have been promulgated or confirmed by the four holy councils, namely, that held in Nicaea, and that held in Constantinople, and the first one held in Ephesus, and that held in Chalcedon, shall take the rank of laws. Novel 131 of Justinian. We therefore decree that the ecclesiastical canons which have been promulgated or confirmed by the seven holy councils shall take the rank of laws. Note. The word confirmed alludes to the canons of the regional councils and of the individual fathers which have been confirmed by the ecumenical councils. According to Balsamon, for we accept the dogmas of the aforesaid holy councils precisely as we do the divine scriptures, and we keep their canons as laws. Basilica, Book 5th, Title 3, ch. 2, in Phocius Title I, ch. 2. The third provision of Title II of the novels commands the canons of the seven councils and their dogmas to remain in force, in the same way as the divine scriptures. In Phocius, Title I, ch. 2. Leo the Wise, in Book V of the Basilica, Title 3, ch. 1, says, I accept the seven holy ecumenical councils as I do the holy gospel. It has been prescribed by the Holy Fathers that even after death those men must be anathematized who have sinned against the faith or against the canons. Fifth Ecumenical Council in the Epistle of Justinian, page 392 of the second volume of the Conciliaires. See a fearful discourse, beloved one. Anathema on those who hold in scorn the sacred and divine canons of our sacred fathers, who prop up the Holy Church and adorn all the Christian polity, and guide men to divine reverence. See. Held in Constantinople after Constantine Porphyrogenitus, page 977 of the second volume of the Conciliaires, or, in other words, the volume of the Union that the divine canons override the imperial laws. In Act 4 of C. 4 it is written, And the most glorious rulers have said, It pleased the most divine despot of the inhabited earth, i.e., Martian, not to proceed in accordance with the divine letters or pragmatic forms of the most devout bishops, but in accordance with the canons laid down as laws by the Holy Fathers. The council said, as against the canons, no pragmatic sanction is effective. Let the canons of the Fathers remain in force. And again, we pray that the pragmatic sanctions enacted for some in every province to the detriment of the canons may be held in abeyance incontrovertibly and that the canons may come into force through all, all of us say the same things. All the pragmatic sanctions shall be held in abeyance. Let the canons come into force in accordance with the vote of the Holy Council, let the injunctions of canons come into force also in all the other provinces. It has seemed best to all the Holy Ecumenical Council that if anyone offers any form conflicting with those now prescribed, let that form be void. C. 8 of the 3rd. Pragmatic forms opposed to the canons are void. Book 1st, Title 2, Ordinance 12. Phocius, Title I, Ch. 2. For those canons which have been promulgated, and supported, that is to say, by emperors and holy fathers, are accepted like the divine scriptures. But the laws have been accepted or composed only by the emperors, and for this reason they do not prevail over and against the divine scriptures nor the canons. Balsamon, comment on the above ch. 2 of Phocius. Do not talk to me of external laws. For even a publican fulfills the outer law, yet nevertheless he is sorely punished. Chrysostom, Sermon 57, on the Gospel of St. Matthew. And again, 
for emperors often fail to adapt all the laws to advantage, sermon by, on the statues. Blastaris says, however, that laws that tend to favor piety lend a great impulse, i.e., aid or help, to the divine canons, on the one hand, by concurring with them and affording them support, and, on the other hand, by supplying things that they may be lacking in some place or other. Ch. 5 of Canto 20. That the divine canons override even the rituals, when the latter happen to be at variance with them, especially if individual or regional. For Blastari says, from the novel 131 of Justinian you can tell that rituals made by the Ktitors in the monasteries are to be tolerated or welcomed unless they are opposed to the canons somewhere. Ch. 16 of Canto 30. A heroic elegiac epigram to the sacred canons. A trinity artfully wrought a world of material. And has adapted the sea to the principal canons. By adhering to which, the great world will never be destroyed. Divine order and a system of good laws will prevail. Yet the namesake of Christ has established the world. And has kindly bound it together with the sacred canons. Wherefrom is excluded every habit of sin as an obliquity. While the harmony of the sacred system of good laws prevails. Come hither, ye who are imbued with love of God inspired wisdom. If you like them, take them in your hands. A iambic to the handbook. Every ship is steered straight ahead with a rudder. But with this handbook all the church is guided aright. As many as conform to this canon, peace be upon them, and mercy. Of Saint Gregory the Theologian. How absurd is it not that one is not permitted to be ignorant of any law of the Romans, not even if he be exceedingly boorish and unlearned. Nor that there is any law to help one who does anything because of his ignorance. Whereas, on the other hand, mystagogues may be ignorant of salvation, of the principles of salvation. Notwithstanding that in other respects they are among the more simple and possess no deep intellect. Discourse addressed to Athanasius the Great. Of Chrysostom. I heard and failed to observe you failed to observe? Why, then, you have condemned yourself. Though you observe not, yet if you but say, I failed to observe, you have kept a half part. For anyone who has condemned himself for not observing, is earnestly trying to observe. Sermon 4 on Repentance, page 785 of Volume 6 of the Etonian Edition. Of Saint Cyril of Alexandria. Therefore let all of us listen who neglect to read the scriptures, and learn what great injury we are suffering, what great poverty. For we can never have any actual experience in matters of statecraft unless we know at least the laws in accordance with which we ought to conduct ourselves both publicly and privately. See his. Commentary on the Gospel according to Saint Matthew, ch. 13, verse 52, interpreting the words therefore every scribe, etc. Of Saint Maximus. There are many of us who say, but few who do. Yet no one ought to garble the word of God because of his own negligence. On the contrary, he ought to confess his own weakness. And not try to hide the truth from God lest we be brought to trial on charges of misexplaining the word of God besides transgressing his commandments, ch. 85 of the 4th cent, of things concerning love, page 329 of the Philical.